Josh van der Fleer, folks, reigning world player of the year. Uh, he had a pretty good year in 2022, didn't he? But I've had him on my brain a little bit. Don't ask me why. And I was tempted to do a video and then thought, nah, it's going to take too much time. But then people said, no, 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 do it. So here we are. Been looking at Josh van der Fleer's stats. Uh, from 2019, back in that, you know, Rugby World Cup year, uh, through to the year where he gets World Player of the Year, just to see, like, has his game genuinely got that much better? Because I'll be honest, when, I think it was like a Champions Cup preview when I first started following the Champions Cup, and I had very, very little idea about the European club teams, and I know he'd played for Ireland already, but... I was asking people, who should I be looking out for? And people were like, a few of them were like, Josh van der Fleer. Firstly, he's not South African. I was like, okay. And they said, he's a you know, real hard tackler and a real high work rate. No, I watched him for sure. And I thought, he is very much a high work rate player. He just runs and runs and runs. He loves just like charging down at opposition tens and he gets up off the deck amazingly quickly and just as like the Energizer Bunny and, and runs all day. But was it like what I thought like he's definitely going to be like a candidate for World Player of the Year? Like back in 2018? Like probably not. Like I don't want to say it in a negative way, but a little bit kind of one dimensional in that he was really good at what he did, which was high work rate and got through a million tackles. That's pretty much what I saw, which is useful. Like you need those kind of guys. I love a guy like Johnny Gray. Big Scottish lock who just makes a million tackles. Like, I can appreciate that, but not going to be World Player of the Year, right? But then, sure enough, Josh van der Fleer's game has gotten to another level. I mean, that's, I think, obvious. But I wanted to see it in the numbers to see if, like, what you see with your eyes and what your brain registers is actually true. So let's have a look and see how much of his game has changed from 2019 through to when he gets World Player of the Year in 2022. And the one that gets talked about a lot, to the point where it's cliche and people start mocking each other for saying it, is that he's worked on his carrying. But he literally has worked on his carrying. He's on the record in interviews saying, Andy Farrell told him, you need to work on your carrying. And remember, this guy's position uh, with the Irish squad was kind of under threat you know, a few times. Like Will Connors at one point looked like he had kind of supplanted uh, Josh van der Fleer. And I mean, Nick Timoney in more recent times is another kind of tackling machine guy. Um, but I mean, Josh van der Fleer has managed to kind of hold everyone else off. But he genuinely worked on his carrying with the coaches at Leinster. And I'm looking at his test stats only, but his Leinster numbers are probably equally as good. But he genuinely has worked on his carrying. So let's look. We'll have a look at his run and run meter stats from 2019 through to 2022. Now, these are just an average of how many he got per game across each season. Uh, and a couple of the seasons, he was a substitute. The last couple, he was always a starter. So it shouldn't be too much variation. But 2019, he's getting nine run meters a game, and he's having five runs. So that's not particularly flash in terms of your run meters per carry or the run meters per game. 2020, which is obviously COVID disrupted, is, uh, is a little bit less. He's getting fewer carries with three but he's getting similar run meters. So his run meters per carry is actually probably a little bit higher, but it's still nothing that flash. Nothing to really write home about. Like you've got your edge of your seat stuff when Josh van der Fleer gets the ball. 2020 runner, 2021, I think you can see a genuine improvement. He's uh, doubled his carrying from the previous year to more than six carries a game. And now he's getting 20 meters a carry which is still like not the best in the world, but that's starting to get pretty tasty. And then 2022, he's getting his hands on the ball even more. Eight carries a game, and he's getting 22 meters. So genuinely, this guy's work with ball in hand has like more than doubled. He's not only getting the ball more, but he's getting more run meters. So that's pleasing, right? That's exactly what you want to see. That's exactly what he's supposed to be working on. Has that resulted in kind of uh, more X-Factor stuff? Well, X-Factor stuff with ball in hand, two of the things you're looking at is clean breaks and defenders beaten. These are the things you get when you are carrying the ball. 2019, he gets three clean breaks and beats three defenders. That's like, okay, but some other guys could get three defenders beaten in one game, let alone one season. 2020 is pretty quiet. Remember, fewer games, though. 
Uh, this is just the total number. No clean breaks. Two defenders beaten. 2021 when we saw those run meter numbers pick up. Look, he's got a clean break. And now he's up to nine defenders beaten. And then 2022 where he wins World Player of the Year. Gets three clean breaks, which for a Lucy is pretty bloody good. Across the line, he played 10 games. And then 10 defenders beaten. So genuinely, this guy's ball carrying, again, is, uh, is more X Factor. You're starting to, to warm up when this guy uh, gets the ball in hand. Has it resulted in more try scoring opportunities well i think so 2019 no tries no try assists 2020 one try no try assists relatively quiet on the the point scoring front 2021 suddenly we've got three tries and no assists and then unsurprisingly in his world player of the year year he gets his best numbers with four tries and an assist on top of things so genuinely man what you were seeing and what has become almost a joke by people saying it over and over again is backed up by the numbers. His, his running game has genuinely improved a lot. Now, is he like the best, most dynamic loose forward in terms of his, uh, his ball carrying and whatnot? No, of course not. He's absolutely not. There, there's certainly other Lucies who better him in runs, run meters, tackle busts, and all that kind of stuff. But you got to remember... Uh, his other side of his game has always been strong. Like the defensive side of his game has always been phenomenally strong. Like uh, if we're looking at his tackles, 2019, uh, he was getting almost 11 tackles a game. Doesn't miss many. Uh, similar in 2020, the missed tackle count was slightly higher that year. 2021, a little bit less of the old tackles with seven and a half. Um, but then 2022, when he wins World Player of the Year, averaging 16 tackles a game. 16 tackles a game. For an Irish squad that plays with so much possession to be getting 16 tackles a game is incredible. Like genuinely the teams who have the highest tackle counts are the ones who don't have the ball that much. Like Argentina in 2021, pretty much all the top tacklers, I think even in the rugby championship 2022, most of the top tacklers were Argentina because they don't have the ball. But Ireland love the ball and Josh van der Fleer always just makes a million tackles. So yeah, that side of his game has actually gotten better as well. Um, yeah, very, very pleasing. Um, some other stuff, just by the by, his passing numbers. He's certainly getting his hands on the ball a lot more. You can see in 2020 and, sorry, 2019 and 2020, didn't really pass the ball much. Wasn't required to, a pass a game. 2021, suddenly he's a ball carrying option and he's passing the ball more, four passes a game. 2022, he's passing the ball more than five times a game. I've put turnovers conceded there as well because the more ball you get, the more chance you've got to drop it. And he has dropped the ball a little bit more in 2022 than he did in the previous years, but it's still pretty marginal. But yeah, he's passing more, he's carrying more, he's getting more meters, he's making more tackles. Um, interestingly though, <coughs> it's not his best year for turnovers one. And I've never thought of Josh van der Fleer as like a massive turnover merchant. Like he's never been a David Pocock kind of like just absolute pilferer. He can certainly pilfer when he needs to. But I feel like often he's getting the tackle and somebody else is coming in to get the pill for like Andrew Porter's graded at Ireland. Uh, but there's a number of guys there. But um, his, his pilfering numbers, it's the one that's actually his lowest equal is, uh, is 2022. Every other category, he seems to top out in his World Player of the Year year. He's only credited with two turnovers, one in 2022, whereas in other years he's had three or five. Uh, and his penalty count with six is by far his highest. So... Maybe that just speaks to the amount of involvements that he's getting in. He is getting on the edge a bit more, so he's considered a few more penalties. Also, his importance to that Irish squad, if you're looking at the number of games he's played, uh, remembering that there were obviously COVID disruptions and injuries as well in there. He plays 10 games in 2019, two from the bench, five games in 2020. Remember, he's also under threat from Will Connors. Um, so he's an 80% starter in both those years of the games he's selected. Then 2021, he starts all his games. Uh, seven from the seven games he plays, he's a starter. And then 2022, he plays 10. I think the only game he didn't play was at the Fiji game when they played Timoney. And uh, yeah, he's, um, he's just been ever present in 2022. And you're looking at the number of minutes he's been playing. He's gone from an hour guy, again, with a couple of years, the first two where he's had a couple of bench appearances, which lowers his average minutes, to 20, uh, sorry, 2022, where he is pretty much playing every minute. I think there's one game where he comes off on 65 minutes and lowers his average down, but pretty much every game he's playing 80 minutes. So, Josh van der Fleer, has he 
rounded out his game to become an absolutely more well-rounded player? For sure. Has he always had the massive work rate? Yes. Has he always gotten through a lot of tackles? Yes. And now he's got a bit of ball carry to his game as well. I don't know, folks. I thought it was pretty interesting to see how a guy who's not like, you know, he's in his late 20s, can evolve his game and um, take it to another level and get rewarded with a World Player of the Award. And this is all just the stuff that's caught by the stats. There's obviously other stuff which is not caught uh, in terms of the number of like cleanouts he does and first man to arrive at a ruck and all that kind of stuff. But um, certainly a very busy guy. I reckon he's a pretty good player. I thought he was a pretty deserving winner of the World Player of the Year award. And it's, it's nice to see the numbers back up what is seen from your brain. But there you go. You guys let us know your thoughts. If you want to buy us a beer over here in New Zealand because it's pretty scorching weather, I wouldn't say no. I'll put a link down in the description. Um, if you want any rugby gear, uh, check out Love Rugby down in the description as well. They're always doing kind of sales on them with the Six Nations just around the corner. They will certainly be putting some gear on sale as well in time for that competition. But yeah, you guys take care and uh, I'll talk to you guys again soon.